So when I make these YouTube videos and in my professional production work, I'm often using high quality animated titles and little graphical elements. And these comes from plugins and templates. So I basically want things that look fresh and clean and modern, that sort of thing. So I've been using Motion VFX since April 2022, and they've just reached out to me and said, would I make a video showing some of my favorites and how I use them and how easy it is to actually customize them. So I said I would. So this is technically my first ever sponsored video. Now, to qualify this, you can look at any single one of my YouTube videos since April and you will see that they are full of motion VFX. So I'm genuinely using and loving this product. So in this short video, I wanna show you where you can get them and what sort of plugins they have available how much they cost, there's a discount link in the description of course. I'm gonna show you the ones that I use, my favorites, and how easy it is to customize them so our graphics don't look the same. And to demonstrate that, I've created a short little sequence. I literally built this in about 35, 40 minutes, and I've thrown a load of motion VFX effects on there and templates and transitions and that sort of thing. And so let me show you this and then we'll talk through what I did. Okay, so it's no masterpiece, but it gives you a just general good smorgasbord of what Motion VFX have on offer. So the first thing you need to do is go to their website. So on the homepage, motionvfx.com, I'm gonna go straight to DaVinci Resolve, and in here is where you're gonna find all the packs available for DaVinci Resolve. So in here, you're gonna find LUTs, light leaks, you're gonna find transitions, you're gonna find titles, all that sort of stuff, buttons, callouts, all the things that you're gonna to need to make your videos look fantastic. I've got quite a few of these. MKBHD, I've used this one probably far more than I should. Uh, he's got his own pack that you can purchase. So obviously a little bit of customization, that one looks great. I've got this one, MGB3. This is giving me nice little calls to action, subscribe buttons, all that sort of thing. Uh, M Title Cinematic 2 I've got, I use this one a lot, this is great. So you can just have a browse round, and basically if you want to see what any of them look like, just obviously click on them. So let's have a quick look at this, I've not seen this one before. M Holo is a new one. So you can either watch a little trailer about it, you can actually watch a tutorial on how it's done and it's gonna look something like that. I'm sure that's gonna be useful for someone. So there's this one here, M Matrix. This one's actually free. So I'm gonna install this one and show you how to do that. So I'm gonna double click it and I'm not gonna watch a tutorial on it. I've probably got a pretty good idea of what it's gonna do. And I'm just gonna click on here and go to my cart. Now I'm gonna accept the conditions. Obviously this would have a value if you were paying for one, but this one's free. So I'm just gonna press pay. And that is now saying, do you want to allow this page to open M Installer? So obviously I'm gonna say allow. And I'm gonna click up here, this is my M Installer application. So M Installer is its own bit of software from Motion VFX. This is managing all the packs that I've bought for DaVinci Resolve in a dedicated app. And the beauty of this is, every time I launch the app, it's gonna refresh all those packs and make sure that they're always on the very latest version because they add new features all the time to the individual packs as well. And they are then updated automatically on DaVinci Resolve. So I don't have to do that ever. I don't have to keep updating latest versions. It's all managed and done for me inside M Installer. So I love this. M Installer is also handling my licenses. So when I purchase a pack, you get two licenses. So I can use it on two machines at the same time. So let's scroll down and find one that I've been using. So M Tutorial, I use this one quite a lot. This is great. It's got little pointers and little mouse icons and things like that. And this is installed on two of two devices. So I've got it on my laptop at home and I've also got it on the Studio One here. So I could uninstall one of them here and then I, that would free up a license to put on something else. I can click on this little icon here. I can watch a tutorial about how to use this dedicated pack. Uh, frequently asked questions, help and support, and I can actually hide the element inside my M installer. This is where that matrix one should appear. So we go up to the top. Yes, yeah, so this is sorted by date. And, and oh, just on here, by the way, so this is all the plugins I bought. This is the stock elements I've bought. So I've got the dust and I've got these leaks. And so to install this, we're gonna just press install and that's gonna do its own work in the background. Okay, and it says up here, M Matrix installation complete. So in the edit page, up to effects, and these are our general DaVinci Resolve effects, but if we go to transitions to start with and pull down, you see we've got motion VFX. So these are all the packs that I've installed that have got transitions in them. And if I scroll down here, they're all listed here as all of them, but you can go into the individual packs here. So there's the MKBHD one we were just talking about. And these are just the transition elements from that pack. Now, if I come down here to titles, you'll see that they are the regular fusion titles with Resolve, 
but click down one more, we've got motion VFX. And again, if I scroll that down, these are the different packs that have got, that have got title elements. So the MKBHD one has got titles in it and it's got transitions in it. And then if I come down one more, come down to effects, you'll see here again, we've got motion VFX and these are all the packs that I've installed that have got effects in them. So I've literally got tons of these things. And let's try and find that matrix one that we installed. So there's a um, matrix here and no surprises what this is gonna do. Just hover my mouse over it. You get a preview of the effects that is applied here with this hover scrub preview. So let's have a look at some of these effects in a bit more detail. Now we started off with this cinematic title and the cinematic title packs are what really drew me to motion VFX in the first place. They're really stylishly done, but they're super smooth. And the reason for that is that all the effects that you get from motion VFX are created in fusion. So you get that fantastic quality. All of the intros, the outros, the transitions, the title packs, everything is created in Fusion. Now, I'm not an expert in Fusion, I'm all right in Fusion, but I'm not an expert. And the beauty of Motion VFX is that I can control all of the effect parameters using either the edit page or the cut page. And you simply go to the inspector. So these are all generated using Fusion, but I'm controlling them using the edit page. So I can go in here and change anything I want. That title is fine. Uh, Let's call it Cinematic Titles 2. And if I want to adjust this blue here, if I just come down here, you can adjust all the parameters. There's the color of the mask, and I can make it whatever color I want it to be. So again, you can adjust its width, so you can choose which letters are actually covered with it. And on each of these packs, you have the ability to control animation in and out, or both. So I can put both on, and that will now animate in and out. So one thing to take note of is that all of the effects in Motion VFX have this content control, which is basically your overall positioning and scaling, okay? But the scaling here is not as high quality as if you scale at individual level. And that's because of the way that the anti-aliasing works in Fusion. So if you scale at individual level, if you wanted both of these to be bigger, if you go to that one and then go to the header in here, and you can change this one to be a different scale as well you're gonna get much better quality than if you did that using the content controls. Now, some of these packs are pretty heavy, so playback is obviously coming from Fusion, and the performance you're gonna get is really gonna depend on the computer spec that you're running. Now, there's a few things that you can do to help it. If you're running in Ultra HD, you might wanna think about dropping your timeline down to HD just while you're creating the elements, and then you can put it back to Ultra HD again when you've finished. You might wanna think about your playback up here. You can go to Timeline Proxy Resolution and change that. Uh, render Cache, you could switch that on to User, and then what you wanna do is is right hand click and say render cache fusion output and stick that either to auto or on. What that's gonna do then is render in the background and it's gonna create a smooth playback cache for you. So you can actually see the title playing back smoothly. So this came from the cinematic pack. There are tons more in there. I've got cinematic and cinematic two. You've got end credits in here. You've got, there's just tons of them. They're really good. This is really one of my favorite packs. All right, so let's have a look what else we've got in here. We've got another cinematic pack there. We've got down here, what's got going on? We've got some transitions in here, so let's have a look at these. There we go, so you've got a really nice quick transition. This is a very classic sort of YouTube-y type transition. So if I just zoom into that, that is in fact from MTuber 3. And again, another one of my favorite packs. So if we have a look at that, MTuber 3, this is full of everything you're gonna need if you're running, uh, if you're a social media influencer or you're running your own channel. Everything you're going to need is in here. You've got all the icons. Look at that, you've even got the Twitter icon in there. So that's not going to be needed for much longer, I don't think. But it's in there anyway. You've got TikTok. And these are obviously editable. So you just click on here. Again, you just go into your inspector. But this time, you're not on the video side. You're on the transition side. So you can adjust the duration here, the alignment, all the colors. Everything that you're going to need access to is in here. So it's really easy to do. And moving down here, I've got another one from the MTuber 3 pack. So this is where I've got a little avatar and this thing, you know, your like, subscribe type thing. Again, these are all in the calls to action section. So each section is quite easily laid out. So in here, smash the like button, you've got all that sort of stuff. And you literally, if I just highlight that and I want to change the avatar, you just go to the avatar controls, hit on the browse, choose your avatar, Load it in and then you can change its offset within, you can change the size of the actual avatar itself and you can animate that any way you want. 
Now, one of the packs I use a lot is M Tutorial. Obviously, I'm a tutorial based channel. So, this is full of things. I've just got like an animated mouse. You can decide whether it clicks left or right, all that sort of stuff. Just boxes, frames, arrows. These are all really useful and they're all completely editable. So, on my little edit, I've got a little pulsing thing here. Oh, yeah, you've got your keyboard shortcuts here as well. So, I often put those on screen. But this little pulsating thing. So if I just highlight that again, just straight into the inspector, it's really easy. I can change the thickness here. I can change the color and how much it pulses, all that sort of stuff. And you just literally drag and drop it over. Now I can adjust its position using the X and Y here, but a little trick is just to use your transform tool here and you can literally just do that as you like. Again, decide whether it animates in and out or both. And there you go, really easy. So this next pack I use a lot. This is the MKBHD pack. Now, what I really like about this is I don't really use elements like this. I just put it on for a bit of fun. And just to show you, all this is completely editable. So you can change the text and the font and the size and all that sort of stuff. But what I really like is just the fact that you've got glow. So on the text, it's got a little bit of glow and it looks really great. So I tend to take all this stuff off. So if I didn't want that box, you just come down here you can take off the dots and you can take off, because obviously a lot of this is MKBHD's branding. So you've always got that little chevron thing. So I normally either just alter it or make, certainly make it a different color. So there, so I've taken all those elements off and now I can adjust the glow. And this, I just really like a really bit of subtle glow on this text looks great. So you'll see that a lot in my YouTubes. So just to show you what you get in that pack, if I click on MKBHD up here, this is the uh, transitions that you get. So there's a few transitions in there. Again, you recognize that kind of chevron thing. And if I come down to titles, MKBHD here, it's all in little sections. So you've got backgrounds, so you can use any of these backgrounds. Call to action. They're all just really subtle. All these elements that you've seen on the background, you can take any of these off, add them, change the color, size, uh, features. So this is where he does a little list. Now I've done this one, actually, if I show you down here, I've actually done this one. And so you can see here, you've just got this nice glow, nice and clean. And if you want to customize any of this, just again, highlight the box, really easy, click on here. So the color I took from his helmet. And that's done, that just animates it. So I hope you're getting the idea of just how easy these are to create. Drag and drop them on, customize them, make them your own. They look fantastic. The performance has actually been improved with version 18 of Resolve. So this is why I like the M installer because it keeps those plugins up to date. So they have been optimized a little bit better in version 18. And um, other things to note before I forget is you can actually apply these to adjustment layers as well. So uh, MKBHD, for example, has got this sort of zoom tool. You could apply that across multiple clips using an adjustment layer. So just before we finish, I want to show you a couple more things. But if you are enjoying this, hit the subscription button. I'm not going to put a little logo up there because I've shown you about 20 already. But I just want to show you these last couple of things. So this clip here has got one of my favorite effects on it. It's the M callout simple two. And if you watch what's happening here with the helmet, I've got this call out that is actually tracking as he goes along. And this is really simple to do. So what I'm going to do is delete this one. So highlight the clip, go to my effects, and there's all the controls for that effect. I'm going to trash it and I'm going to bring it in again. So this was from this one, M callout 17. And I'm going to drag and drop it on Go to the effects, I'm going to build this from scratch. And now you see my tracking controls and all the other effect controls that I need. And I need to change this here to be Fusion Overlay. And what I can do now is adjust the tracking point here to be on his helmet. And I'm going to press Track Forward. And that is done. So hopefully that now tracks, which it does. And all we have to do now is change the font and the text and the color or whatever we want. So I'm going to put that back into transform mode. In fact, I can switch that off here. I'm going to go to my title controls and in here the text. So it's called safety kit. And I'm going to just change the color. And I'm going to make it match his helmet again. Say OK. And that's done. And you can even change how this looks. If I go to the call out controls here, it's currently set to linked. I could put that to be static. So as it comes round, the text actually stays still, but the pointer changes. Or you can go to this one, perspective, and you get a different view. So it's really cool, really flexible, and a great looking effect. 
And one that I've just downloaded very recently is this one called Restyle. So in here, you've got all these effects where you can just add a bit of sort of grunge and glitch and things to effects. So these are gonna help you make really nice sort of backgrounds or intros, that sort of thing. So I'm sure you'd agree with me, Motion VFX is well worth checking out. These effects have saved me hours, if not days, and the quality is absolutely fantastic. Use the link in the description and enter the code Darren15. At checkout, you're gonna get 15% discount. If they are offering better discount codes, you can enter that code, still use the link, enter that code, and you'll get the better discount. Look after yourselves, and I'll see you in the next episode.